Hello, my name is Michael Elder and I have the opportunity to work with Gifted Services here in Onslow County Schools. And today we'd like to just take a few minutes to share a presentation from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, specifically the Governor's School. Um, we are very excited again to offer the opportunity to a number of students from Onslow County Schools uh, to participate in Governor's School or to be nominated for Governor's School. And so we're going to walk through this presentation and I want to give uh, due credit to Tom Winton and to Camilla Robertson from the North Carolina Governor's School who prepared this presentation and they are delivering this across the state um, here in preparation for students to apply to the Governor's School. So. I'm just going to give my overview of this presentation, and uh, if this is helpful, we, we certainly hope that people will take uh, advantage of watching it. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, again, my name is Michael Elder, and you can find me on the Onslow County Schools directory. So, very quick overview. Um, the North Carolina Governor's School began in 1963. It was the very first Governor's School. Uh, offered in, in the United States. It is held on two different campuses, however pretty much the same program goes on on both campuses. Students apply to Governor's School and then they are placed based upon uh, the, the availability in those two sites. So even though we are here in Onslow County, that doesn't necessarily mean that our students go to Governor's School East. In fact, typically half of them go to Governor's School East and half will go to Governor's School West. Governor School East is held at Meredith College, and Governor School West is held at Salem College over in Winston-Salem. As the slide here indicates, there are over 35,000 alumni out there. Many of our uh, many of our parents here in Onslow County had the opportunity to attend Governor School when they were juniors in high school. Um, this program is meant to be an opportunity for uh, talented students and bright students to get together and work with other bright and talented students. Uh, it is an opportunity to question things. Uh, it is not necessarily the time to come together and show how smart one person is. Um, it is the chance to have collective wisdom. And so our students that have gone in the past will tell you that this is, if you get a chance to go to governor's school, then you get then you go to Governor's School. Um, it is a once-in-a-lifetime kind of opportunity, and um, all the feedback we get every year is very positive from the, the five weeks that students spend at Governor's School. It is for typically rising seniors, so students who would complete their junior year here during the 2015-16 school year, um, and it would be seniors in the upcoming 16-17 school year. Uh, it takes five weeks um, during the summer, and students need to be able to commit to attend for those five weeks. Um, it is about learning for learning's sake. So there are no tests at Governor's School. There's no checklist. Um, there are outcomes that people develop as a result of their time together, but it's not about the tests and about quizzes and those kind of things. On the DPI website at ncgovschool.org, you can find a lot of information. We also have this listed on our Onslow County Schools uh, website, uh, through which is tagged for Governor's School. Uh, your high school counselor is your main point of contact. Anyone is welcome to contact myself. Again, my name is Michael Elder or Michelle Chadwick. Um, but your main point of contact is your high school counselor. They have the the most information about the number of slots and those kind of things for your school. So you decide you want to go to governor school. What kind of things will you be will you be decided deciding to focus on? So there are the two areas and one area is academics and one area is in the arts. Um, so in the academics you can see the fields listed there um, and then in the arts there are certain fields. So you do have to pick one of those to apply uh, for the governor's school. So typically what, hap what happens is someone will, at the school, a lot of times the school counselor or perhaps a teacher in the, in the performing arts, uh, will identify certain students who, um, who show a proclivity in these areas, and they will nominate the student. Um, you as the student then would complete an application, and we'll look at some timelines for that here in just a minute. Uh, so one of the things that typically comes up during this talk is, is that the only thing we do is if I apply for math and I do math for five weeks, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Um, 
And the answer is no. So you do spend a chunk of every day in that content or that focus area, whether it's theater or whether it's uh, visual arts or whether it's math or English. Um, but then you also have two other areas. And the, in these other two areas, this is really where you get into the questioning everything. This is where you get into where do ideas come from? Um, what are some of the current possibly political topics? What are certain um, moral issues? What is beauty? What is art? What is truth? Those kind of things. That's in the area two piece. And then in area three is where you interpret this in for your own, your own action. So uh, lots more details on that on the North Carolina Governor's School website. Uh, but we do like to make sure that people know that you do spend a lot of time in your area of passion, um, in your area of achievement, but you also spend a lot of time um, doing other things while you're at Governor's School. So some of these outcomes are the things you see here. So there are seminars that are led by leaders in the field. Folks come in from out of state, you have university folks, you have um, leaders in our communities. Uh, there are obviously performances and the performances are not always the folks in the performing arts. Uh, a lot of times we'll have students who are very passionate about the arts, but maybe they're real drive and the reason to go to governor's school is in English or is in math. Um, so you see some pictures of kids here and just things like going for a run with other folks um, are part of the governor's school time because you obviously have a lot of time in those five weeks together. So you learn not only the academic piece, but also the social piece and have a chance to just have fun while you're there too. So the timeline piece, we're going to look at, this is the North Carolina Governor's School timeline slide, and I'm going to pull up our Onslow County Schools slide for you as well. Um, so by November 13th, we here at the district level have to have submitted all the information to NCDPI. So we work backwards from that in terms of when students need to apply to their school or need to be nominated by their school and when we need their packets. So we'll look at that timeline that's probably more important to you as a student here in just a second. If you are applying in the academic areas in math, English, social science, those areas, um, then your application is complete once we send it in. If you're applying in the arts areas, however, your application then is followed up with an audition or a sharing of your portfolio. So those pieces for the art students occur in February. So if you are nominated and if you are nominated in the arts, then you'll be contacted about an audition time in February. Typically in March is when we hear back from the governor's school in terms of their um, I believe it's about 650 students that they will take. Um, I'm looking for the number here, but I'll to, I'm not sure exactly. I think it's 650 students across the two campuses. Um, and last year, I believe there were about 18 or 1900 applications. So uh, that notification comes. Then you have to decide if you're accepted. Then you, it, some, most folks will obviously accept that, but there are a few. Um, who may turn that down and then the governor's school goes to their waiting list. However, they don't typically have too many people turning it down. So um, once you hear in March, that's that's usually a pretty good indication of if you're going to get to go to governor's school or not. And then the governor's school itself occurs in June and through July. So it pretty much picks up right about the time school lets out. And then you're there from June 19th to July 27th. There's a small break in the middle. Um, where parents get to come up um, and visit with the students and take them home for a couple of days, uh, spend a few days together, um, usually the week of or after the 4th of July. So you'll find that information in, in the online information as well as if you are accepted. Obviously, you'll get lots of, lots of follow-up from the governor's school. So let's look for a moment at the Onslow County Schools timeline for, for governor's school. Um, on our Onslow County Schools uh, timeline, we have we have some more specific details about um, our Onslow County process. And again, this is posted on our website, and your school counselors have this as well. So we're not going to go through the whole piece. Um, we talk about some testing, the testing requirements. We're going to go over those in just one minute uh, back on the NCDPI presentation. Uh, so you will see here that we have some informational sessions that are going on currently. Um, those are completely optional. Um, this session is meant to 
cover that for folks who can't get to those sessions. Uh, school counselors will be gathering names between now and October 8th, and then on, on or about October 8th, um, you'll begin to get information, uh, or the, our school counselors will be sending that information in uh, to us here at the central office. They will complete names there. Your application packet is due by Thursday, October 29th. So that means if you are nominated, then you would be getting your letters of reference. You do take two letters of reference. Um, there are two essays as well, um, and those essays are incredibly important, especially in the academic areas. That's the only way that people get to know you personally. So it's really important with those essays to do your very best writing. It's also very, very, very important to make sure that people who do your um, letters of reference know you well, um, that at least one of them is a teacher at your school, and that at least one of them is in the area that you're being nominated. Uh, those letters of references are weighted very highly um, in the review process by, by the state. So then on November 3rd, academic students will get to come here. We like to meet with all of our academic students. It's probably going to be on November 2nd. I know this says November 3rd and then possibly the 2nd. I think we've had to shift that a little bit. So probably on November 2nd, we'll be bringing our academic students in here um, to the central office for a, just a brief chance to talk. We call it an interview. It's more just of a conversation. Uh, that gives us about a week to get any revisions done. So if we notice you left something out of your application or a reference might need to be cleaned up a little bit, um, we'll give you that feedback. We then will be mailing November 11th to make sure our packets get to DPI. Um, and then we talked about the February auditions for our friends um, applying or being nominated in the arts. And there's our timeline at the end of the, towards the end of the school year for um, picking up with uh, getting, getting results back and the dates for the summer. So let's talk about eligibility just for a moment. So. In order to be eligible to be nominated for the North Carolina Governor's School, you have to be a North Carolina resident. You have to be in an 11th grade student, which means you're a rising senior in the summer next year. Um, the only exceptions to that are in a couple of the, um, a couple areas. 10th graders are also eligible. So those are, um, listed on the uh, in the packet and we can certainly go over those with anybody they are all in the arts areas and they're very specific in terms of 10th graders uh, there is no aptitude score required um, you do have to have an achievement score however so if you've taken an end of course test a math one test an english two test um, or a biology end of course test you can use those results um, they do have to be at the 92nd percentile or higher. If you don't have that, um, we, through gifted services, can administer a uh, something like the Stanford 10 um, achievement test. And that doesn't take a huge amount of time, but we do need to schedule that if you are nominated and don't have a, a qualifying score. You can't use a score from an end-of-grade test, so like an 8th grade end-of-grade does not count for this. Once you meet the eligibility requirements, then you are into the review of your packet. So once you're eligible, then that gets you into the pool. It doesn't necessarily matter if you're 99th percentile on your test or 92nd percentile. It's just a matter of being eligible. Then what the state will do, um, and, the, and they review every application that comes in, um, the state will look at your scholastic performance that being your most recent grade in the area that you're nominated in. They'll look at your class rank. They'll look at your overall transcript to look for academic rigor, as well as how you've done in different courses. They certainly understand not everybody is a straight A student, but they are looking for um, students who have, who have achieved at a very high level. And then you will provide them with, like we mentioned earlier, two recommendations and your two essays. Uh, you can look at those essays. They are already in the packet. You can if you're being nominated, you can begin those as early as possible. And they're also going to look at your extracurricular activities. What kind of things have you done outside of the school day? So a lot of similarities between this and a college application. Um, like we said, those recommendations and those essays are huge. That's very, very important that those are written well, that they're clean, that they really tell your story, and that they highlight the best of you. 
So our friends in choral music, dance, instrumental music, theater, and visual arts, you will have those auditions. Those will be scheduled probably in February. Um, so if you are nominated in those areas, you need to be prepared for that. There's information in the packet as well uh, about um, ideas for the auditions. Um, some of it's very clear, like the visual arts piece, and then other pieces like the choral music, it'll give you an idea about what it is. But typically you will get the actual piece of music or maybe the uh, the monologue if you're doing theater. Um, usually that comes in about December, so you have time to practice it. So you, you have plenty of time to work with it, um, but you won't get that until a little later. The North Carolina Governor School charges a $500 tuition the rest of the five-week camp is completely paid for. We don't ever here in Onslow County Schools want the $500 to be an issue, so Gifted Services pays the $500 tuition for anyone who is accepted. So you can take that off your list. We take care of that. Um, there are scholarship possibilities, however. So if you happen to be eligible for a scholarship, we may ask you to apply because that takes the burden off of our Gifted Services budget. The, the Governor School Foundation has raised through private donations and through corporate donations uh, a, 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 a large chunk of money to help students who may not be able to afford the experience with Governor School. So if you're accepted into Governor School, then we'll, we'll talk about that with you. So we're always asked, well, what's the, what are the odds? Am I going to get in? Am I not going to get in? Should I plan something else for the summer? It's very hard to say. Um, Last year, we had 13 students that were accepted into the Governor's School. That was up about five or six from the previous year. We don't know from year to year. It's completely um, a quality-based situation. So the better our applications are, the more likely we'll get more students in. Uh, we get to nominate, I believe, 28 academic students and a similar number in the in the arts as well. So those are divided across each of our seven high schools uh, based upon the overall population of the schools. Um, so that number is given to us by the governor's school and so we then, like I said, divide that across all seven of our high schools so that every high school has a chance to be represented uh, whenever they are selected by the governor's school. If you don't apply though, you can't be accepted. Um, one thing that Tom Winton always says that I want to make sure that I share here is that being nominated is truly an honor because when you think about it, we're only given 28, again, in the academic area. So that's 28 out of, say, 4,000 students are being nominated. So it's okay on a college application to say, I was nominated by my district. Um, I com you, know, you completed the application, you were completely vetted through it. Whether you're selected or not, that's a whole other issue. Um, and that's, it's okay to list that you are nominated for this. That it's like being nominated for any award. That's, it's a reward in and of itself. Depending on the area, between about 25 and 40 percent of the applications are selected. Obviously, there's some more competitive areas than others. That depends each year. Um, the governor's school will remind us one year they'll get twice as many math applications as the next. So you want to pick the area that you are passionate about, not try to guess which area is the easiest to get in on. So if you're passionate about math, then apply in math. If you're passionate about theater, then apply in theater. Um, pick, your, pick the area that makes the most sense to you. If you have questions, um, again, you'll see the contact information here on the screen. You are welcome to contact uh, your high school counselor, there are several email addresses up here for Tom Winton is the coordinator of the Governor's School and Camilla Robertson is the assistant. They are fabulous about getting back with us. Um, and so they will do the same for you. If you email them, if you call them, they are great about answering questions. Um, and they, this is what they do and they truly take a lot of pride in that. Um, so again, we have on our gifted services website, let me pull that down here for you. Again, that website is right up here at the top. Oops, I'm going to drag that around. Um, and you will see that address right up here, onslowaig.weebly.com slash governor school. You can also Google it. Um, that's probably the easiest way to find it. Um, and on that page, you will find all the information we just talked about. We'll embed this presentation there as well. Um, the links for the 
for the timeline are there. Um, a great article about Justin Powers, who is one of our students who went to governor's school last year, um, and it was featured in the Daily News, um, is posted there. The nomination packet uh, is there. The application, all the, all the forms that you will need if you are nominated for governor's school are all there. So we thank you again um, for taking the time to watch this. If you had a chance to go to the, the presentation by Tom and Camilla, I hope we've done it justice. And if you didn't have a chance to go to that one, Hopefully this, uh, this fills that, that need for you. Again, my name is Michael Elder, and myself and Michelle Chadwick coordinate this at the district level, and we'll be glad to talk to any of you if you have any questions.